One of the trickiest part for me when I started to draw is knowing how to simplify objects into basic shapes. I used to read those how to draw box when I was starting up and I used to see them starting objects with a basic shape and then adding details like that meme we all know. But they never explained how to divide an object into basic shapes. So where to start first? Let's take a look at some examples ranging from simple to complicated objects and anything in between. I talked about this subject back in an early lesson of this series, but I didn't go over perspective, just basic shapes that we can rebuild an object with. But now we have the knowledge of perspective to add to that. So this is the final combination of basic shapes and perspective to simplify any object you want to draw. There are two ways to simplify objects into simple shapes. Some objects may have very visible parts that can be represented as basic shapes. For example, we have the top part, the main body, and the bottom end as large, medium, and small shapes. These can be separated as three different objects. The other way is to have main parts and connecting parts, like we will see later. The main goal here is to identify the main shape of the object, whether it be a sphere, a box, a pyramid, or any other basic shape, and then build the details on it bit by bit, going from large to small as always. So if I were to draw the large bottle here, I will start with the main axis, since this is made out of a long cylinder. A long cylinder that is shaped in and out in different areas. So I start with the main axis, and then mark the areas where the bottle changes shape like the top and bottom and the connection between the main body and the top end and the main body and the bottom end. Now I can draw the basic shapes of each part, like the cone in the top, a reverse cone in the main body, and finally a small cone at the bottom. These are the main shapes of the bottom. Now let's draw through it, just to see how the perspective changed from the top to the bottom. The base part will have a bigger ellipse, while the bottom part of the neck is almost a straight line which tell us that this is where the horizon line is. Once I have the main shapes done, now I can curve and fine tune the main body like the curve of the whole bottle. So I draw the first half of it from the top to the bottom, and then mirror it to the other side. The neck seems a bit wider, so let's thin it a bit, and redraw the connection in between. Also let's scale the whole bottle as well. I don't need the basic shapes anymore, so let's hide the layer and add the smaller details like the texture on top and some cast shadow on the bottom. Finally, let's turn this into a finished drawing and add some line weight here and there. And it's done, a very simple shape done using basic shapes in a correct perspective. Let's add some complexity and draw this perfume bottle. The main body with the perfume is in a pear shape. We have the cap on top and the neck as a connection in between. So again, this looks like a cylinder without the details. So I start by drawing the top and bottom limits with an axis in between. The horizon line seems to be at the top part just under the neck because we can see the ellipse turn to almost straight line there and then we start to see the bottom of the cap on top. So let's add the marks for the cap and the neck on the main cylinder and see how the ellipses will look like as we go up.
Once I draw the ellipses, I connect in between them, and we have the cap done. Let's scale it a little bit to make it look like the reference photo. Now let's draw the body. I draw the ellipse for the widest part of the bottle, and then I draw the top and bottom as well. So all I have to do now is to connect in between them while maintaining the angle of the curve. The bottle is mainly done now, so let's draw the whole thing with a final line rate. I'm only drawing one side here because I will mirror it to the other side since this object is symmetrical. And now let's clean up the connection between the two parts. Finally, we can add some textures, details, and decals if you want to. And it's done. Let's now change shapes and draw more of a mix in between the boxes and cylinders. Here we have two objects, the box and the bottle. The bottle has three connections, the main body in the bottom, the neck, and the bulb. Two boxes, a cylinder, and a squashed sphere. So let's start drawing the box first. I'm trying to get the same perspective as close as possible. Next, I add the base for the cylinder and then the cylinder itself. The cylinder is made of three parts, the main body, the tip, and the connection in between. After that, I draw the bulb by drawing the bounding box first and then adding a sketch of the bulb inside. The first part is done. Let's add a perfume box next to it, which is basically very easy. It's just a box. Now we are done, I can go back and start adding the smaller details. Notice that the perfume main body has some fillet and chamfer edges all around. Also a recessed interior on all sides. For the perfume box, I can add the label in the middle by finding the diagonal center. I have all the details I need now, so I can move on to draw the final outline. Starting first with thin lines and then increasing the thickness on intersections, foreground versus background and so on. Actually, we'll talk about the line weight in the next lesson after this one.
Finally, I start adding the tiny details like decals, textures, cast shadow, and so on. And there it is, all done, looks nice. Moving further up the difficulty scale, let's draw the simple coffee maker. Here we have three major parts, the main body, the cylinder, and the cup. Very straightforward. So we start with the box first, to get the perspective aspect right. It looks like a one point perspective slightly off center, almost at the horizon lines of the top. Once I have the box done, I can now add the opening which is about two thirds or slightly over a half. Then I extrude this area onward as a boolean and cut it off from the box following the same perspective in the reference. With the interior drawn, we can now move on to the cylinder. The width of the box seems a bit larger than it should, so let's scale that a bit. Next, let's draw the cylinder, which is about two thirds up, and then we can extend it all the way to the interior of the box. I will draw it all as one first, and then add the details later. Finally, let's draw the cup by drawing the bounding box first. Next, I find the center of the front face to see where the center of the bottom edge will be. See, this cup is also made of three parts. The base, the main body, and the handle. We are going full on freehand in this drawing, but still using some technical aspect of perspective drawing. The whole perspective grid is there mentally as I draw, but without putting anything on paper except the outline of the object. Now that I have the main sketch done, I add a new layer for the final outline. I draw with thin lines first, and increase the thickness to emphasize the important part and connection of the object. I also start adding the details I missed before, like the cylinder handle, the decals, and the texture.
For the bottom holes, I just draw them all horizontal and then use the transformation tool to place it in perspective underneath the cup. If you are drawing this on paper, you can draw the bounding box for the holes and then divide it equally for each hole. And it's done. Very simple once you get the hang of the initial rules of perspective. Moving on to another children's toy with a bit of a boxy features. It has the main box as a body and kind of a trapezoid for the cabin and of course the wheels. So let's start with the main body of the truck focusing on perspective lines and angles. Once I have the box, I can scale it to the right size. Now I know the reference is more of a three point perspective since the vertical lines are not 100% vertical, but I will make it in two point perspective to make it easier to draw. Moving on to the trapezoid or the cabin of the truck, making sure the lines align as they go into the vanishing point. Let's draw the wheels next by drawing the wheels halfway in the body and halfway under it. We can do that by finding the first half first and then duplicate it down to get the other half. Now I can draw the ellipse in the center of each bounding rectangle. The cabin seems a bit off now in comparison to the wheels so let's fix it up a bit. Next I draw the boolean holes in the main body like the windows and the windshield. Make sure all the interior lines align with the existing exterior lines as well. Still using the tools of perspective here but doing it all in freehand mode. If you are having troubles doing the same, don't push yourself to do it. Go back and do it in a technical way till you get more comfortable with it before attempting the freehand mode again. Or draw this whole thing using horizon line, vanishing points and perspective lines and then do it again in freehand after. After removing the line in between the box and the trapezoid, we get the main body of the whole truck. Let's extrude the wheels back toward the mental vanishing point to make it look like a wheel and not as an ellipse. I have all the details now. Let's add the final outline using line weight, as well as drawing any last details, textures and values.
Let's lower the opacity on the initial sketch so we can see what we are doing on top. Add in decals and textures after doing the final outline now. And it's done. I think I missed the two ambulance lights on top, completely overlooked them. So if you are following along, draw two cylinders on top and round the top edges of each one, just to make it look like the reference photo. The wheels are a bit tricky to draw without the marquee tools, but it would have been easier to rotate the canvas and zoom in a bit more to draw them correctly. But this is more of a quick sketch, detailing isn't really that important for this lesson just yet. Now I add another level of line weight on top, just to make sure the shapes look better, like adding thicker lines at the shadow areas on the bottom of the object and under the wheels as a cast shadow. And here it is all done by using simple shapes. Okay, let's now move on to furniture. We went from basic shapes and drawing boxes to now we are moving into more serious objects. Props before and now furniture. Is it any different? No, not at all. We use the same tools we did for the boxes to draw more complex objects. So here we have three parts. The main body of the chair, the legs in the bottom, and the cushions inside. So let's start with the main box of the chair which is a tapered box or a trapezoid, wider on top and thinner on the bottom. Take your thumb on these initial sketches. The more careful you are in this stage, the better your perspective will be and the better your final drawing will look like. If you get this wrong, no amount of details will fix the final drawing and you will have so much trouble as you move on. So it's better to get it right from the start than try to fix it after. Next I add the bottom part as one box as well, tapered the other way around, including all the legs together. 
Once I have the main body done, I can now start adding the inner details, starting with the main body, which is basically a smaller frame moving around the bounding box and curving on the back. I will draw it first as straight lines and then round it up in the final detailing phase. This is the limit of the bottom cushion which is protruding forward a little bit. Now extruding it backward to the back side of the shell. Let's add more detail to the legs which will be at the corners of the bounding box. The perspective in my drawing is a little bit skewed than the reference photo. You can see the angle on top is a bit wider than it should. This results in the fourth leg on the top right side being hidden underneath the shell in this view. So I want to force it and draw it anyway. The perspective changed and so should the details as well. So the fourth leg will be hidden in my drawing as a result of that. You don't have to copy the reference 100% as long as the spirit of the object is still the same. We will be modifying reference objects anyway in the future lesson as I said before, but we will try our best to get the likeness here as close as possible, and we will change that later on. Finally drawing the cushions on top as two rounded boxes. Let's hide the lines behind to make them look more in the front. And here it is, this is basically the whole shell done, and very quickly as well. Drawing the basic shapes makes things much easier to draw that you go from feeling intimidated to draw such complicated object to understanding the structure of it and just adding details on top of a finished framework in a few minutes. This is the logical step to come after learning how to draw basic shapes, boxes, contour and so on. So if any of this looks too far ahead of where you are now, please go back and make sure you practice as much as you can before coming back to this. Now I did the final outline for the share making sure that I draw any details I missed earlier. Add another layer of details on top with thicker lines and more textures. All done. And here are the steps. We went from the basic building blocks to drawing the main shape and finally adding the details. This makes drawing anything much, much easier to do than to go at it right away. If you just started drawing this right away with full details, you will have so many issues and mistakes that it will take twice as long, if not more, and it won't even look that good in the end. So build it up as you are building an actual share from large to small to fine details and you will have much less trouble drawing complex objects this way. Let's draw another piece of furniture like this lamp. This lamp contains the main body, the lamp shade as a cone on top, and the connection cylinder in between. Very straightforward. At the top the ellipse looks almost a straight line, which means the top is where the horizon line is. Now 
Now that we have it all, we can simply fill in the details later on. But let's not trace it, let's draw it from scratch. First, I add the base and top limits with the center line in the middle, since this object is symmetrical with an axis in the middle. Next, I draw the box for the bottom shape and adjust the scale accordingly. Next, I add the connection cylinder and the top shape as a cone with a flat top and the end cap in the center. Now that I have the main basic shapes done, let's segment the main box into the actual shape of the lamp. We have the middle square shape and top and bottom tapered boxes with an angle. So I make sure I add these segments to the box so I can add the details later on. So on a new layer, I start adding the details on top and smooth out the box into its original shape. The lamp is on a one point perspective, so you can still see the side of it a little bit. Once I curve the shape out of the bounding box, I make sure the scale of each part is correct. Now move around to the cylinder. Finally adding the top shade as a cone with the cap. The next layer will be the textures, drawing a little bit with the details on top of the main body. Finally adding the last layer with the correct outline and line weight.
You can add some values just for fun, but it's not necessary for this lesson. But you can always make your drawing look better, and that would include the painting on top with values and eventually with colors. Moving on, we are getting more and more complex with our shapes. Now we have an old form. Let's take a look at the main shapes first. We have a square box base, a pyramid on top, two cylinders with a box in between, and finally the connecting wire which is a long helix. So let's start with a base box first, and then put the pyramid on top. Once we have the perspective lines as close as possible to the phone, we can next add the pyramid. The pyramid is flat at the top, so we draw it like that. Now I know the lines are not straight to the top, but let's simplify it first before adding the curves. Once I have the main shape, we can start curving this large block into smaller chunks of details. Not the final small details, just the medium ones first. So we go from large to medium to finally small. The bottom of the foam, for example, have one part on the bottom for the legs and one on top for the base of the pyramid. On top, we have a little bowling as a hole for the handle to sit on. Now, even the handle will cover this, I still like to draw it to make sure it's correct and to understand the object before finalizing it. You have to know the function of the object you are drawing in order to know how to draw it and how to change it later on. Next I have the dial which I can draw the bounding box for. From the side I can see where the phone handle starts and I draw the main shape for the handle from one side all the way to the other, making sure I keep the same distance from all sides around the main shape of the phone and the handle. The bottom of the handle has to go through the holes we made all the way to the other side. So now we can delete everything the handle covers. And we can see that it needs a bit more adjustment on the right side to make it smaller and thicker at the same time. Now for the wire, I can draw the main cylinder first and fill it up in the final drawing. Just get the direction and the location first before getting bothered by the details. Also observe the negative shape it makes with the handle and the phone main body. Now that we have the initial sketch done, let's add another layer of details on top using the initial sketch. Now we can add the curved line for the phone. For the dial, I draw the circle in the front view and then manipulate it to fit in the perspective of the phone. Now I draw another ellipse for the thickness of the dial. And then more circles for the center and the numbers. 
I use all the tools available in Photoshop to speed up my work. But if you want to do this manually, please go ahead. Draw the bounding box for each number and use the diagonals to draw each one in its correct place. If you want to do it perfectly. I can now show you many ways to draw these. But it's up to you to draw this manually or even traditionally on paper if you want. Using the tools available for each medium. Now drawing the handle again with the interior details and joints we see inside. Always rotate the canvas when drawing ellipses to make it easier to draw long, clean lines instead of smaller, scratchy lines that will look bad and unprofessional. Finally, the wire. We can now add the details for the helix. It can get a bit confusing as you draw them, but make sure you get the overall shape first and then start dividing it into sections. Like the bottom one, the one rotating to the top, the middle part, and finally the one going into the handle. This way you don't get overwhelmed by the whole shape, just smaller parts of it. Finally adding the curve of the main body of the phone on the other side and it's almost done. Let's add more thickness to the handle and scale the right side a little bit more. This is basically it. So let's scale the phone a little bit in width and add the final lines on top. In this phase I'm very careful with my lines. Only clean decisive lines with varied thickness to emphasize the shape of the phone. For the dial, I use the marquee tool to do a clean ellipse all around. Now adding some thickness to the numbers to make it look three-dimensional. Going over the handle using clean long line to draw the whole thing in few exact lines to make it look sharp and clean.
rotating the canvas again to get these clean lines for the handle. I'm using thicker lines for the exterior and thinner lines on the interior. Finally the wire. Let's take our time here and draw the continuous line going in and out and in and out again as it goes down and back into the main body. Finally adding another layer of flying weight to separate the shapes by putting some of them in the back and some of them in the front. And it's done. Of course you could always take more time to add values, colors, and modify the shapes even more. But all this was drawn in perspective in freehand using basic shapes, which is the important part here. So if you reach this level, you should be really proud and really happy with the results. But if you can't draw this, nothing will stop you from drawing more and more complicated shapes, even figures and portraits. They all follow the same formula, from large shapes all the way to the final details. Moving on to the next option. Here's another piece of furniture, but this time it's more classical than modern, which is more complicated and more detailed than the modern one. If you look at it, it's simply made of large cylinder with a space in between the top and the bottom, which is replaced by columns. We don't have any straight lines to see the perspective here, but we can understand from the position of the drawers on the top and the bottom that this is facing toward us and slightly to the right. To be exact, just connect the columns of this table and you will see the rectangle or the bounding box for this table. So let's draw the bounding box first and start curving it into the table later on. Just like what you would do if you actually made this out of wood. Next I divide the box into segments we see in the original photo. The bottom with the legs section, the columns, and the top. Now we can draw the ellipses for each rectangle making sure it has the right orientation of the drawers in place. Next I extrude these ellipses to get the cylinders of each part. Now we have a rough estimate for the shapes, let's add some more details. We 
we can see that the columns are glued over these straps on the base section. These wooden straps go from the top all the way to the legs at the bottom. The legs are basically deformed spheres with a little cap at the bottom. Now that I have the strap done, I can copy it and mirror it to the other side and then scale it a little bit due to the change in perspective. And then remove the parts we don't see in that angle. Since the legs are spherical, they will look the same in any place, just differences in scale. To get the other columns, I know that they are on an axis, like every leg will be facing one in the back, and they will have one center in the middle. So I can use this to get the location of the other columns using the ones we already have. Once I mark the base, I can work on one column and copy it around. The columns are cylindrical objects with laid properties, meaning that it has the same edge rotated 360 degrees around. So I draw the axis for the column so I know where the center will be, and then draw the circular ellipses around it, making sure that it's equal on both sides of the axis. If I had any trouble making it equal in size, I can just copy the part to the other side of the axis and it will look symmetrical. Once I have the column done, I can now copy it to the other four locations and scale them a little bit to fit the perspective. And we can tell how much to scale them by how much they will disappear under the top part of the table according to the reference. I copy the curve of the bottom part of the center to separate the drawers in the middle. And then add the handle for both drawers. For the top, we will still have to draw the straps on the top part, same as we did on the bottom. I move the top edge a little bit because I drew the top a little bit thinner. I draw the other strap on the other side as well. The rest of the column strap doesn't show, so we will just move on to the top of the table. As I'm drawing this, I realize the top is a bit too curvy in my drawing, meaning that the perspective is a bit wrong. In the reference, the top is closer to the horizon line, so it's getting a bit flatter. So let's flatten the top a little bit to make it look like the reference. Finally, the last part is the top drawer, which is in the middle of the area above. The handle will also be aligned with the ones on the bottom, so you will know where to draw it. Once I have finished the initial sketch, it's time to clean things up with a new layer of line weight and a cleaner drawing. Along with using marquee tools to draw perfect ellipses, you can use the pen tool to draw perfect curves as well. Use whatever tool you have to get cleaner lines. If you can do it manually, then by all means do it manually. Just do whatever you need to get a crisp drawing out of it.
Once I have the first draft done, I can move on and add more line weight and values around the table to emphasize the shadows and the weight of different parts of the body. Adding some shadows and values here and there. And it's done. Things are getting a bit complex as you can see. But the more you do these examples, the better and easier things will get. Let's keep going with more examples. This time we are moving up toward a kitchen appliance. We have a base as a smooth box, a larger mixer above as a cone shape, the handle, the cap on the top and the connection in between. So what we can do here is to start with the large bounding box and also draw the axis going through the center. Cause this shape have a center that all the parts share as an axis. And that will also be going through the mixer blades in the middle. Let's try to segment it now for each part. Next, let's start adding the main shapes without any details, like the box in the bottom. It's a bit tapered on the top. So let's curve it a bit. The connection is basically another cone with smaller top. This will be the center which has the smallest diameter for all the parts, except for the cap on top. Next we draw the mixer, which will be the inverse of that cone, starting smaller and going bigger on top. Next the top cup is just few cylinders going all the way to the center. Finally the handle which is a tube going from the top to the bottom. Now that the initial sketch is done, I make sure that there are no huge mistakes or bad dimensions. This is the time to fix any large mistakes, otherwise it will be much harder to fix later on with all the details on. Let's add the final layer on top and start adding some precise details. I'm using light lines for this stage, just in case I have any mistakes that it will be easier to fix this way. The center dial have a little rectangle around it, so let's draw that and then extrude it out. The dial in the center is an extruded cylinder with a base for it. Next I work on the connection between the mixer and the base using a pen to draw cleaner lines. Once it's done, I move on to the mixer and draw the large shape on both sides. Finally, 
Finally, the top is a series of ellipses, as I mentioned before. I adjust the lip of the top a little bit and draw the details on the mixer top edge. Now adding the rest of the details on the glass and adding the mixer blades inside. Drawing the handle next. Now the whole thing is done. I start adding the final layer of details with thicker lines and more shadows to make things look a bit more realistic and 3D. I duplicate the layer on top to make it darker and lower the opacity a little bit. I finally scale the whole mixer in width and length to make it look like the reference photo. And it's done. It looks good. Let's draw another kitchen appliance using technical and freehand drawing techniques. This toaster is simple as a general shape. It's basically a box, but it has very smooth and round edges. But in order to draw it, let's first draw the bounding box for the whole toaster. I make sure the perspective is correct, so I try to mimic the angle as I can see it in the reference photo. Once I have the bounding box, I start segmenting the details I see in the photo, like the bottom part of the toaster with the legs, the top curve when the box starts moving toward the top, and finally the top. Now I start adding the smooth line on top of the toaster. Next I draw the main shape for the toaster all around using more freehand techniques than technical ones. But I'm still working inside the bounding box that I drew. Only getting out a little bit when I add features that are outside the main body. I can also make the bounding box a bit bigger to avoid that, but this works as well. To find the placement for the dial, I go back to the perspective techniques and use the diagonals to find the center of the front side and then add the dials and the details to the center of that face. I'm using the bounding rectangles for the dial and the buttons before adding the ellipses later. I find the center for all the boxes so I can add the ellipses in the center. For the side, I add the rectangle for the handle a little bit off center, just like it is in the reference photo. This is basically a smooth box inserted inside of the smooth side of the toaster box, basically a boolean operation. I add the handle next by drawing the bounding box for it first and then adding the cylinder in later. For the top holes, I can center it using eye sighting to draw the holes up there. Or you can use the diagonals if you want to go technical with it. For the bottom, we have a very smooth and rounded shape in there, with three visible legs around the bottom.
now that we have all the parts drawn, I can add a new layer for the final details. Now I slow down a bit and observe the reference photo while drawing its details, using the guidelines I already drawn. I can draw curves using a pen or using a new layer and then change it using the transformation tool. I also rotate the canvas as much as I need to draw these long, very curvy lines. Now that I have the full shape done, let's start adding the details inside. I add the ellipses for the dial with a slight distortion since this is in perspective and off-center toward the side vanishing point. I add the buttons after one. Let's finish up the top with more details for the toast holes. Now this step is done, let's add a new layer for the final details like the decals and numbers.
The final layer will be for the final outline and line weight. I take as much time as I need here and zoom in to make sure all the lines are clean and straight. I add lighter lines inside for the interior than the ones for the exterior outline. Yeah, smaller and smaller details now, and some decals. And it's done. You can move on and add some values if you want, just for fun. We will talk about painting in later lessons, it's a whole course by itself, but for now let's just finish it up. And it's done. Here are all the layers one by one. From a sketch of the basic shapes, to the final details, to line weight and outline, and finally values. That's the way we can build shapes from start to finish. Let's move on now to the final stage. We will draw this hand drill completely in freehand mode, with all the details. This is where we want to be eventually after all the studies we made for perspective. To be comfortable enough to draw all of this as we see it using perspective lines and tools mentally. Here we have the main cylinder on top, the connection handle, and the base part, and we will do all of it in freehand right away, doing all the calculations and bounding boxes all mentally. So let's start with the main cylinder. I start with the axis of the cylinder, so I don't draw the cylinder all over the place. 
Next, I start with the sketchy lines for the tip all the way to the main body. Completely random and sketchy lines here. This is the final stage of perspective drawing as I mentioned. Quick educated lines with all the mental calculations happening in the back of my mind. I add the sections where the cylinder changes shape like the middle part and the end and so on. Now I start sketching the handle and the cover around the cylinder while observing negative shapes, angles and measurements and keeping the perspective lines correct at the same time. Now I go to the handle and the base part. The base is a box with different openings, but I can still tell the perspective angle of it. So I draw it without any details first, just to make sure it's drawn right. And then I move on to the last bit of the drill on the bottom. This quick sketch stage is now done. Let's lower the opacity and start adding another level of details on top. Still sketching and eyesighting all this, but now drawing a little bit slowly and more carefully than before. Because I have the guideline sketch underneath it, so now I can include more details while making sure the base shapes are intact. I rotate the canvas while drawing curved lines to get a better handle of the lines. I move on to the cover of the cylinder and the handle underneath it. The lines are more precise now in this stage, so take your time and observe the reference photo very carefully. I don't just move on in continuous lines, I jump back and forth around the object. Like for example going back to the cylinder to finish the lines there making sure they all measure correctly to each other. Back to the handle, and now to the bottom part of the drill, adding more details as I move along and smoothing other parts up. Now the shape is all done, I can move in and start adding interior details like the joints, buttons and holes. Moving back to the main drill, and now adding some buttons and the logo of the drill. Now starting the third level of details with thicker lines, careful angles and more precise details.
Also notice how the alignment is giving more importance to some parts, making the drill come to life and showing how each part is separated from the other parts, yet presenting them all inside one unit. Once I'm done with the details, I can now turn the sketch lines into a final outline and add the final level of details on top. Adding more values, more shadows and cast shadows, more hatching and more details all over the drawing as a final layer. All of this was possible using the lessons we had before and the perspective knowledge we had so far. All the technical drawing we had before are now converted into this freehand method. But remember that this should be the last level of perspective drawing, not the beginning of it. The start should always be technical. And as you move up and practice more, you will start drawing less technical lines and more mental lines for your object. Till eventually all the calculation will be done mentally and only the final object will be on your canvas. Now that the drawing is almost done, I can start rescaling it a bit to fit the reference photo. Maybe even cutting the whole cylinder by itself and scaling it a bit. You can always clean up the lines afterwards, so it's okay. And it's done. I'm happy with this drawing and how it turned out to be. And with that, we went from drawing simple objects by using basic shapes to finally drawing the whole thing in layers using freehand. We went from boxes to simple shapes to vases to home appliances to finally props and utility tools. Next, we will move up to drawing a whole scene instead of just objects. For example, still life, interior space, or even an exterior house. We are moving up step by step toward more and more complex subjects. So if you are still in the prop stage, draw as much objects as you can. When you find out the object you draw is a bit distorted or doesn't look as good as the reference photo, you can always stay in this stage till you are comfortable enough to move forward. This lesson will always be here for you. So take your time, study at your own pace, and don't rush it out to just finish the course. Take your time and improve at your own speed. Once you are done with this level, let's move on to drawing a whole scene in the next lesson, using both technical and freehand techniques like the one we used here and in the previous lessons. But before moving on to the whole scenes, I want to take another detour to talk about line quality and line weight. You have been hearing me talk about adding line weight at the end of each drawing since lesson one. So it's only fair to explain how do we add line weight. So what are the tools? the rules, and everything in between. So before moving toward drawing scenes, let's talk about line quality and line weight in the next lesson. You would not want to miss that one, trust me. And as always, if you like this lesson, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section, and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. To stay notified for future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.